Hey guys, it's Ben from Board to Bits here, and this is part two of our series on how to make a dynamic pie graph in Unity. Last time we talked about the mechanics of the pie graph and set it up manually. Today we're going to actually be getting into the scripting and show how this can, pie graph can make itself. What we discussed basically was that the pie graph needs three things. It needs a set of data, it needs some colors for its wedges, and it needs a prefab of the wedge itself so that it can dynamically populate those. The wedges will need some information as well. They're going to need, first off, to be parented and positioned uh, to the pie graph. They'll need a color to be. They'll need their size set, and they're going to need their rotation set for their position because, say, once we have this first piece here, this next green piece is going to need to be rotated so it starts here instead and then fills in this amount of space. The pink one will need to start here and so on. So to start, we can actually get rid of some of these wedges because we don't need individual wedges in the scene to start. We'll keep one because we're going to need to create a prefab of it. We'll delete those. We actually have one here. I'll delete that. That was from a previous run of this video. Sorry about that. So we'll take this wedge and we are just going to make it fully filled and we're going to make it white again the script will actually handle all this for us, but for the sake of cleanliness, looks a little bit better. We'll make a prefab out of that by dragging it into the assets. And this prefab is now all set. We can delete it in the scene. Now that we have that, we need to add a script to our pie graph to have it actually build itself out of these wedges. So we'll add a component, name it pie graph. It'll be in C sharp, and we'll create and add that new script. And we can jump into this in Mono Develop right now. So once Mono Develop is loaded for you, I'll zoom in here a little bit on what I'm doing. So we will be keeping the start function because once the scene begins, we'll want the graph to make itself. We will not need the update function, however, because we're not we're not going to be doing any uh, real-time changes. We are, however, going to need three public variables. The first one is for the data that we're creating. We'll use a float. You could also use an int, but we'll make an array of floats called values. We need the colors for our wedges, which we'll use an array for as well. We'll just make an array of colors called wedge colors. And lastly, we're going to need to take that uh, wedge image and make access to that prefab. In order to get the image class, we need to add a namespace up here using unityengine.ui. And now we can say public image wedge prefab. Now before we dive into actually making the graph, we'll jump back to the editor and we'll quickly fill in this information. As soon as it compiles, there we go. So values, in a full game you'll probably actually be um, importing some values from either another object, a game manager, maybe even a database. But for the sake of a tutorial, we'll just make it all self-contained. So we'll say we have an, ar an array of five variables here. We'll say we've got 1.1, 2.2, 2.2, 1.1, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2
And then the last thing we need to do is add that wedge prefab in here. So now that we've got everything, all of our data in, our colors in, and our uh, prefab wired up, we can go back into our code and we can start making this graph. Now for the start function, I'm actually just going to put in a make graph function here that it's going to call, and then we'll actually create the make graph. Like I was saying before, if you were actually importing data, you could actually import it by making a parameter like you could say float array here of values. But for the sake of brevity for the tutorial, we'll just say that we already have them in our pie graph. So the first thing we need to do is, um, what our pie graph needs to do is, for every value, it needs to instantiate one wedge. So we're basically just going to be iterating through the values, and the for loop will work perfectly for that. So we'll say for int i equals 0, i is less than values.length. So once we get to the last value, we'll stop, and i++. plus plus. And now inside here, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to instantiate wedge prefab. Now we're going to need to do some things as we know to set this. We're going to need to set its parent, set its color, set its size, all that. So we need to make a reference to this. So let's say image new wedge equals instantiate wedge prefab. And because we're calling it an image here, we need to say as image. It doesn't do that automatically for us. And now, now that we have this new wedge, the first thing we need to do is make sure it's parented to our actual pie graph. So in order to do that, we'll say new wedge dot transform dot set parent. If you're working with um, parents in the UI system, you want to use set the set parent function and not just say parent equals whatever transform. It's going to work a little bit cleaner for you, and there's a nice time saver that I'll show you right now. So. We're setting the parent to the transform of the pie graph, so we can just access this, that with the lower lowercase transform. And then we're going to set world position stays to false, which will snap this wedge right to our pie graph, which is great for positioning and saves us some time having to set the positioning later. Next, we can also set the color. And because new wedge is an image, we can just say new, new, new wedge dot color equals, and then we're going to just grab wedge colors i, and so that means the first wedge will be the first color, second wedge will be the second color, and so on. Next we need to set the size. That's going to be new wedge dot fill amount, and that's going to need to equal, we're obviously going to be filling it to a percentage of the pie graph, so it needs to be whatever the value is as a percentage of the total values of the pie. So we need to actually track that somehow. So we can say values i, and that's the value of this particular wedge, divided by total. But we don't have a total yet, so we need to create that. So we're going to, at the start of our function here, set up a float, call it total, and that's going to be equal to zero to start. What we need to do is we need, it's going to start at zero, but then we need to iterate through all of these values so that it the sum the ultimately total equals the sum of all those values. So the best way to do that is actually to just use another for loop. We can use the exact same one actually. Paste it here, close our brackets, and what we're going to say is for each value, total will have that value added to it. Values i. So total plus equals values i. So that's going to go through each value and add it to total. So once this is done, total now equals the sum of all these values. So that lets us divide this by this and get um, the percentage that we want for our fill amount. Lastly, we need to do that rotation. So that's going to be another transform. New edge transform dot rotation. And rotations are oh, not transform, transform. Rotations are in quaternions. So we need to say quaternion.euler, and then that way we can use a vector 3, new vector 3. X and Y don't need to be rotated at all. And then the Z axis is actually where we're going to be uh, rotating. And it's going to change for each, for each wedge, so we need to kind of set up a variable to track how much that rotation is, depending on the wedge we're on. So we'll 
create a uh, create a variable called z rotation. Obviously, that doesn't exist, so we're going to need to set that up as well. And set that up right here. Also, a float, and we'll call that z rotation. And we're going to set that to 0f as well. So now what's going to happen is on our first pass through, z rotation is 0, which is fine because for that first wedge, it's going to start right at the top there. But then once we've built that wedge, we then want it to rotate z rotation so that the next one will rotate the amount based on that first wedge. What that means is we can use the fill amount of the first wedge to set our, help us set our rotation. So all we need to do is say z rotation minus equals, if you watched the last video you know that it's a negative rotation to get the clockwise motion, so that's why we're saying minus equals fill uh, new wedge dot fill amount, and then we're going to multiply that by 360 for the 360 degrees that, we're, uh, that we have in a full circle. And so with all of that, that will actually give us everything we need to create this uh, to create this graph. So if we go back into Unity and we hit play, we should get our full graph. We see this first one goes 1.1, and then this one's 2.2, so it's about double the size. 3.7, it's even bigger. And then we go back down 1.4 and 0 0.7. So if we were to stop this and say make the 3.7 that really big one, we're going to make that even smaller now. We're going to make that down to say a 1.2 and play. Now we see that's adjusted itself. It's almost the same size, roughly the same size as the red one because they're about equal and about the same size as the pink one, even a little bit smaller. Uh, so that's how we create this dynamic graph. You can obviously add more things to this. You could add, say, labels that instantiate as well, or uh, make it animate when it first opens. It's kind of a cool look if it sweeps around the circle. But I just wanted to show you really the basics of getting using the fill amount on um, these prefabs so that um, you can get the effect of this full circle every time, no matter how many wedges you have. You could have as little as two, as many as really you wanted to have that's still visible. Um, and it gets you that, that um, coherent and working pie graph every time. Hope you've enjoyed this and hope it helps you in your game design. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.